Farnborough, where the air show too is affected by the weather. This Air Mackey two-seater trailer is part of the cut-down flying program, and so is this Saab Drachen interceptor, two of the 11 foreign aircraft sponsored for the show by Rolls-Royce, who supplied their engines. So they deserve a place at Farnborough, the shop window of British aeronautical achievement, as do these lightnings built for the Saudi Arabian Air Force by the British Aircraft Corporation. Rolls-Royce engines again, and so has this Dutch Fokker Fellowship short-range airliner. The audience on the ground have to do without much of the traditional air display because the heavy rain has damaged the runway. But all the ground exhibits are on parade as usual and they're really what the show's about. A Hawker Sidley Andover of the Royal Air Force and three vertical takeoff Harriers which enter squadron service next year. In the background, the BEA Trident, the first airliner designed from the start for automatic landing. The Hadley paid Jetstream, of which more were ordered before first flight than any other British aeroplane. The first 40 million pounds worth go abroad this autumn. A BZ-10 of RAF Air Support Command. And from Japan, the YS-11 turboprop transport here on the strength of its Rolls-Royce Dart engines. The Hawker Sidley 125 is a high-speed businessman's plane. If you just want something to play with, how about this? Or, if you're more ambitious, a do-it-yourself aircraft, the Nipper Mark III, a 100-mile-an-hour single-seater you can build and keep in your garage. But you'd need rather more technical know-how to build one of these. This extraordinary model is all one aircraft, and the model Boeing 707 shows its relative size. Invented by Lewis McCarty on the right, the real thing is being built in Yorkshire by Slingsby Aircraft Company. Its purpose? Aerial advertising. With a pilot at each end, it'll be the longest and slowest plane in the world. Very different from the world's first supersonic airliner, the Anglo-French Concorde, which, of course, is also here only in model form. So, for a few months yet, the Nipper's got the feel to itself. But one of Concorde's engines is already airborne. A Vulcan bomber is being used as a flying test bed for the mighty Olympus 593 turbojet in its Concorde nacelle. And here's the Concorde itself, prototype 001 on taxiing trials at Toulouse, carried out by Sud Aviation, BAC's French partners in the project. On the eve of the Fondre show, 001's twin, 002, rolled out of the BAC hangar at Filton, Bristol, with so little fuss that the Minister of Technology complained he hadn't been invited. He thought the occasion was worth boasting about, and many people will agree with it. It'll be 1972 before the first Concords are in airline service, but if that seems a long time, remember, it was announced at Fondra that the Concorde already has a five-year lead over its American rival, the Boeing 2707. Full marks for the Anglo-French enterprise. 